Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today got a project we're going to be starting on, uh, and this is going to be making a set a, of new connecting rod bearings for our steam locomotive out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. Now, our locomotive out there is a 1917 uh, Vulcan Ironworks 040 narrow gauge locomotive, uh, over 100 years old. Uh, we've been keeping it up and running for many years. Museum has been operating it since about 1980 and uh, have put a lot of miles on that. We, the museum has probably put more miles on that locomotive than it had on it in the, in the years prior to that. But regardless, the job today is uh, I've got a new set of bearings that I'm wanting to make for the locomotive that go on the connecting rod. So on the locomotive, there are the connecting rods on either, either side of the locomotive. That's what connects the steam engine to the wheels and then the back wheel to the front wheel that kind of keeps it all uh, going down the track and uh, the bearings on those are excessively worn. We believe these are the original bearings that are on there. There's four bearings on each side of the locomotive, two on each of the two connecting rods, a total of eight bearings total. They're all different, uh, at least on each side. So there's four different bearings on each side uh, and to get that done. We did have a pattern made uh, to, to cast some new bronze bearings for this. We could have made it out of a piece of solid brass or bronze, but that would have been extremely expensive. So we had these cast uh, where we could save a little bit of money on the materials. Uh, and these need to be machined. That's what we're gonna be working on today. So I'm gonna take you over here, show you these a little bit up or close, talk about how we're gonna go out this project and let's get started on making some new connecting rod bearings for our locomotive. So what you're looking at here are the two original connecting rod bearings that go on the inside connecting rod or the connecting rod that connects the rear wheel to the front wheel uh, on the two, on, on one side of the locomotive. So, and again, they are a little bit different sizes. They are gonna require different patterns and different castings. We're gonna be making this back one first because that just happens to be the one that we have in house right now. I've got a pattern on the way and hopefully gonna be having some uh, new patterns for, or new castings for this one here coming in real soon and be able to go ahead and get these made so we can put them all back on there and at least get the inside rod um, like it needs to be. Now one thing I'll note on this is that as it's running the wear on these bearings basically is on the front and the back. There's very little wear on the top and bottom uh, and that's just because of where the pressure is. It's basically just pushing linearly, li linearly I can't say that right, anyway going back and forth uh, on each sis. So over the years, again, over a hundred years, these have worn down. And I have them laid out here on the table, approximately what the size of these bearings would have been when they were new, according to the blueprints, according to the information that we have. So I do have, thanks to the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad Museum, who has the original blueprints and stuff for Vulcan Ironworks, they have been able to send us Blueprint. So I've got the original specs to work off of. And uh, this is how long these would have been. You see the big gap in there? That's where the bearing has worn over the years. Now, as they have worn, what we have done at the museum is we have put shims on the either end of this to keep the length of the rod the correct length. Uh, but again, our goal here is we want to get these new bearings put in here. We could continue using, there's still some meat in here, but they are getting down very close to the end of life on these bearings. There's just not a whole lot of material left in there before we're gonna be coming out the backside. So uh, anyway, that is the job today. These are the castings we're gonna be doing. Like I said, they're already kind of part way done um, and we're gonna be getting those machined. Now, I will just point this out. On this one side over here, there is a taper uh, in here, and that is do, done to adjust these uh, bearings in use. So there's a little, um, let's see if I can find it. Here we go. So there is a wedge that goes, matches that taper back here that slides up and down in there. And basically, when you tighten this nut up on here, it will squeeze these together. That's how they adjust these as they wear on the locomotive. We've actually made some of these uh, wedges in the past. I th don't think this is one that I had made right here. We're gonna have to make one for this bearing because it's, it's all messed up. But um, that's how they would basically adjust these bearings um, as they wore. Uh, and then as you got excessive wear in there, you'd have to put shims in there again to kind of uh, keep everything in proper alignment. All right, let's uh, 
get over to the milling machine and we're gonna start working on milling these castings down into a usable bearing. I think we're about ready to get started here. I've got my bearing over here mounted in a vise on the, on the mill machine. And the first step we wanna do is get the thickness, the outside thickness of this casting down to where it needs to be. Now, right now it's about three inches thick uh, and I wanna end up at two and three quarter inches according to the blueprints and according to the uh, original part that we have. And based on the blueprints, guys, I'll just mention this right now. Uh, the blueprints that I have are general blueprints for this locomotive. Uh, there were variations in what was actually built versus what was in the blueprints. And we don't always have the exact blueprints for our exact locomotive. So I always, uh, the blueprints are usually pretty good. They're usually right, but sometimes there are some slight deviations. So you always verify uh, or at least that's what I'm doing. I'm always verifying that, that my parts match the blueprints. In the case of these parts, they do. So we can make them according to the prints, but I have run into cases in the past where I had to modify some dimensions and actually everything's right, except actually one of the bores for one of them I noticed is different than our locomotive by just a little bit, but that's not gonna really matter. We're gonna have to make these bores actually fit the bores on the, the actual wheels because those have worn over the years as well. So we will be kind of making these custom to fit each individual uh, uh, journal that they're gonna be running on. Right now, I need to take about an eighth of an inch off of each side, get these two sides parallel to one another, and then we can start uh, working on the other surfaces on it. So we're gonna fire up our mill. Let's see, going backwards there, there we go. So that speed down a little bit. I'm just gonna raise the table up until we just uh, kind of touch off. And uh, what I like to do, you know, on a rough casting, there's always deviations. You know, I am making just a little bit of contact there. I wanna just go across this whole part because it's not gonna be perfectly flat. This is not a machine surface. That's the step that we're doing right now is we're making this a machine surface. So we'll just kind of, work our way around it and then we can uh, dial in that depth that we need to to get it cleaned up and that looks like it's just making contact around in the four corners so uh, I think that'll be we're going to call that zero uh, for the job we're going to be doing here so let's go over here Get that where it needs to be. I'm gonna zero my digital readout on the Z axis. I need to come up 125 thousandths total. We're gonna to do this in multiple passes. Uh, I'm gonna try, tell you what, we're just gonna take our time. We're gonna do 25 thou per pass. At least that's where we're gonna start and uh, just see how this machines. All right, first pass. I'd say we got 125 total, so I got four more passes just like that to make. And uh, we'll have this first side decked off where it needs to be. All right, I'm gonna come up another 25. I have no doubt that this mill could handle more than 25 thou per pass, but I'm just gonna take my time and uh, work across this thing. Not getting a big hurry. And putting up a little shield back here to kind of keep those chips from hitting me in the face as it's uh, cutting. 
and I cut in this direction, it's throwing that chip toward me. So uh, this little uh, plastic shield here will hopefully keep some of that off my face. I'm just going back over it here in a different axis, just making sure we got a nice uh, smooth finish across that top. And I'm happy with that. And that has got this side decked off. Here you can see the surface finish on that. We'll be boring this and building the outside, so I'm not worried about those rough edges right now. This uh, side is decked off. We need to flip it over to the other side, but before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and put the other casting in here and get the one side decked off on it. And uh, we'll move on to the next step. I'll do the other casting off camera. So I'm getting ready to face the other side of these. I've got a little problem and just show you this and show you what my solution is gonna be. So, you know, the sides of these are, are rough. They've been ground, they're not square. They're, they're all out of whack. We're gonna be machining those coming up. But first I need to get this side parallel to the other side. Now, when I put this in the vise and I go to cranking on it, watch what happens on the bottom. It's going to lift it up. See that? I got a bottom uh, picked up in there. That's not gonna make a parallel cut. Now I did try an old trick you can use where you put a piece of a rod behind this and you just clamp on the rod, doing the same thing. We're just gonna basically just take this completely off the table and uh, take the vise off the table. I'm gonna just clamp these down directly to the table. Then I'll have it nice and flat and we can go in there and mill the other side parallel. So let me get this uh, table cleaned up and get that vise off and uh, we'll come back and machine the other sides. So these are now clamped down directly to the table. No chance of them moving around in the vise. They're clamped down nice and flat. We should be milling parallel to the other side uh, with this setup. So this is what we're gonna do. I just went ahead and put them both on the table. They're going to the same thickness. So uh, we can really just do this all in one setup rather than having to do two. We got plenty of room to do this on the table. So let's uh, come in here and kind of get a touch off point. Again, I just wanna barely touch and run around these castings. because the original thickness was different between the two. There is a variation in the height between these, but that's fine. We're gonna make them the same. So uh, looks like this one's a little bit higher. We'll start over there and just work our way through these. Now right, we're gonna dial in 25 thou. Um, and I think I'm gonna mill in this direction. Let's go and see if we're touching on the other one. All right, we're not there yet. I'm gonna go ahead and take another 25 on this side. So again, I just got a depth micrometer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna measure down to the table 
and we're measuring, what's that, 858 thousandths. So that's two inches, 858 thousandths. I'm gonna just check it in a couple of places around these, make sure they're all reading more or less about the same. I need to get a file and knock that down. Yep. Yep. We're within about a thou on all these. So, and this is not a super critical measurement here at all. All my measurements were within four thousandths of one another. And again, this measurement needs to be two and three quarter inches, but this is not a critical measurement by any means. Um, but we're going to get as close as we can. So. Well, up till just now, this project was coming along real nice. The castings were machining beautifully, no voids or any inclusions in them. Everything was looking great. However, I got over here and I realized, guys, Bozo has come to the shop and uh, I screwed up and I made a mistake. And unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to scrap these parts and start over on some new castings. So here's what happened. I was measuring the thickness of these using a depth micrometer. And um, yeah, I just made a stupid rookie mistake that should know how better than to do, but uh, it, it got me. And uh, you know, mistakes happen, things happen, parts get scrapped. It's frustrating when you scrap something like a casting that's a lot of time and effort went into making the casting itself before I even started on it. It's a lot easier to scrap a part when you were made it out of, you know, something, piece of metal that came out of the scrap bin. Uh, this is a little bit tougher to bite. Let me show you what happened. So let's start off taking a look at a regular micrometer. This is, of course, an instrument that's used to do precision measurements. Uh, you read this, you know, when I read right here, it's on the zero, it's lined up right there, it's on the three. This is a, what is this, a one to two inch? Yeah, one to two inch micrometer. So that's one inch, 300 thousandths. And uh, as you're rolling this along, as you turn it going in this direction, the numbers get larger. So when we go to the next line, it's 325 thousandths, 330, you add five to 25, 335, you add 10 to 25 because the 25 is on the line. Each revolution is 25 thousandths. Now we're at 350 thousandths because there are two lines. And notice that it reads from zero to one inch going in this direction. So here's a depth micrometer and it's different guys. You're reading as you screw it the other way, your length is getting longer rather than screwing out. So notice it goes, it starts at zero, which is really 10. That's one, that's a one inch mark because nine, eight, seven, whereas the other one went zero, one, two, three. I was reading this like I would read a normal micrometer. And uh, so when I was over here and I was on that 50 or 25 mark, I was on the wrong side. I was reading it on the wrong side. Again, rookie mistake. I know this. I've used depth mics for my last 30 plus years. I know how to do this, but my brain just did not engage properly at that particular moment. And just reading like I always read a normal mic, I screwed up. So in result, because I was misreading my micrometer, instead of these being three quarters of an inch, 750 thousandths right there, they're 725 thousandths thick. I missed my mark by one full revolution of the micrometer, which is 25 thousandths. Now, is that critical? Honestly, in this particular park, I told, I told you that this width was not super critical, and it's not. These bearings would probably work fine. They would have a little bit of side-by-side -side movement in them, but it's not right, and it's not to spec, and it's really not what we want to have. So at the end of the day, I think the best thing for me to do is we're going to have to start this project over with some new castings and do it right. Yeah. Bozo has come to town. So this is obviously not how I had this video and this project planned to go, but you know, mistakes happen. 
we're, 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 everybody's going to make a mistake. I make mistakes. I, I try not to hide them from you when I do. Again, unfortunately, this time when I made a mistake, it was on a critical job on something that wasn't just made out of scrap metal that came out of a bin. You know, I got a casting here. Again, a lot of work and effort went into making these parts just for me to start on them. We're going to start all that over again. It's a, it's a timely, or it's, it's an expensive mistake, both time in a time fashion as well as dollars, but it is what it is. And you just have to deal with it and you have to roll on. Uh, I tell beginners, people that are starting and working, doing this as a hobby or whatever in a machine shop, look, you're going to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Don't be afraid to try something because if you mess it up, you can always go back and do it over again and uh, chalk it up as a lesson learned. And that's all that I can do here is chalk this up as a lesson learned uh, and go on. Either that or I can fire my machinist, but then I'm going to be out of a job. So uh, that, that won't be good either. Yeah, so um, just just saying. What's the game plan? Um, I'm going to get these recast. And I talked with Dave Clark, who made the pattern. He actually poured these in his little foundry. Dave is extremely busy right now. He has, does not have the time to go out there and pour some more of these. But what he's going to do is he's going to send the patterns over to Clark Easterling at Windy Hill Foundry. Clark's actually getting ready to do a big brass job. And he was going to pour the other set of castings that go on the other side of the locomotive. I've got those patterns. Uh, we, we 3D printed them. I got to make a core box for those uh, steel out of wood or whatever. But he's going he's gonna to do those other ones. So he's just going to go ahead and uh, re-pour these. I'm gonna send them these bearings. Uh, we're gonna reuse this material. That's the nice thing about bronze is I can just melt it down and uh, we can use it over again. In the meantime, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take to get all this done. Uh, the locomotive is kind of out of service until the first weekend in September. I'm not sure that we can get everything done in, t in time to put the new bearings on there first week in September. So I think what we're gonna do is go ahead and reassemble the locomotive with the bearings that are on there now. Uh, I do need to make the little wedge piece that's broken on the w one side or the other, I can't remember. I've got the connecting rod here. I wanna get make sure my spacings are right, my shims are right, where it has the right spacing between them. We're gonna do all of that. We're gonna put the old bearings back on there. Like I said in the beginning of the video, these bearings are approaching being worn out, but they're not completely worn out yet. So uh, we're going to have to get a little bit more out of them. Uh, hopefully it's not going to take too long and we can get the proper bearings put on there. Uh, that was kind of my plan to begin. In fact, that is really my plan. I want to do the inside rods first and then we can do the outside rods at a later date. And the nice thing is, is that, um, you know, they pretty much only run the locomotive on Saturdays. Occasionally they run them during the week, but we can get out there, pull this thing apart during the week. And, uh, you know, I can work on my stuff in the weekends and, and we can get out there and change these out in a couple of hours. So it's, it's not something that has to be done while the locomotive is down during August, although it would have been much more convenient uh, if the plan had gone according to plan. So there you go. Uh, no, I'm not perfect. I never said I was. Most of the time, the vast majority of the time, you know, I get things done out here in the shop. Uh, we don't, I don't screw up many parts. I screw these up. It's life. Uh, I can kick myself in the tail, but uh, at the end of the day, it's not going to change the fact that we got to start over. So, you know, I'll be honest with you, it's been a couple of hours since I realized that I screwed this up. I've had time to stop and think about it and calm down a little bit because I was pretty upset with myself early on. But, uh, you know, we're going to move on. And uh, we'll get this project done a little bit later on. And uh, here you go. Uh, never said I was perfect. Guys, uh, this video is not what I intended it to be, but it is what it is. And uh, it's real world. And with that, we're going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video again. Uh, as always, thanks to everybody out there uh, for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments, always greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications uh, when new videos are posted. And as always, a big huge thank you to those who support the site financially. It allows for me to be able to screw something up like this and fix my mistakes and still be able to bring you content along the way. Uh, so guys, with that, I'm going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.